So what is tree girdling? Well, <clears throat> I suspect if you tuned in today that you probably already have an idea. Uh, but if you're new to all this and you're trying to learn some land management, stick around and I'm going to explain the what's and the why's. Girdling or tree uh, girdling, ringing or tree barking, those are some fairly common terms that's uh, well known as well as the practice among horticulturists, um, arborists, and loggers. You can use a chainsaw, a handsaw, they sell a tool that you can also do girdling with. Uh, my preferred method is a chainsaw uh, and it involves cutting a, a collar or two collars around the entire circumference of the, of the trunk and you're cutting through the bark just deep enough to sever the cambrium, the phloem, uh, using one or two collars. And once you've completed that, you'll remove the uh, bark from the area. The bark protects both the cambium and the phloem. The cambium is a thin layer of growing tissue that produces both uh, the, the sapwood of the tree, which is responsible for uh, allowing transport of water from the roots all the way up to the remaining branches and limbs, and the phloem, which is another thin layer of growing tissue, which allows uh, nutrients and energy stored in the tree's leaves to go back down. Now all you need to do is cut deep enough into the bark to sever that cambium and the tree will in very short order begin to wilt and die. Um, the bark, by the way, is actually uh, the old phloem which has uh, worn out and died. Uh, the bark is more or less a tree's suit of armor. So why girdle a tree? Well, in most scenarios it's an excellent uh, land management tool. Now I'm going to girdle this tree back here in just a few minutes. But there are several reasons why it's beneficial to do so. Uh, one would be uh, if you've got a tree that's dying or it's diseased, uh, you can turn it into what I call a den tree, snag tree, where you can go ahead and girdle it and uh, a dead tree becomes a habitat for your local wildlife, you know, your birds, your squirrels, whatever. There may be uh, an instance where um, I want to allow more sunlight to penetrate the, the forest floor. I may have saplings or other vegetation that is starving for sunlight and I've got this tree right here towering over everything. So by girdling that tree, the leaves are going to wilt in very short order and begin to fall off and that will allow the sunlight to penetrate and, and feed those, those other plants. I may have uh, this tree surrounded by numerous other trees and I don't have the time or the manpower, the resources, whatever, to cut all those other trees down just to get this tree out of here. It may be that I just want to leave these other trees and that I've just got this tree that's a problem and it needs to go. However, by cutting this tree down, it may fall into the other trees, cause damage to them that I don't want. These tree, I could have a tree that has a large crown and the branches at the top have begun to weave in to the other trees so that by trying to cut this tree down it's possible it'll get hooked up there and it may only partially fall become what's called a widow maker and I do not want to have a tree uh, in the forest that's at a, a 15, 20 or 30 degree angle uh, with no uh, idea when it's going to fall. That's a very dangerous situation. If I'm processing firewood, I'm going to be out here looking for trees that are potential uh, uh, for me to use in the next year, two, or three years. Well, rather than cut the tree down and let it rot right here on the forest floor, because I don't have time, I can collar it now and once I've cut that pathway of nutrients, the tree is going to begin to dry out, even though it's still standing. There are times when girdling isn't the best option. Uh, there's several types of trees. Uh, a couple species that come to mind would be maple and beech that have an enrolled strip of bark that girdling does not affect. 
So if you have trees that tend to sucker around the roots or the trunk, girdling won't be a surefire effective method for killing those off. So as I mentioned, um, you can use, uh, there are tools available specifically de designed for girdling trees. You can probably get them at your co-op, hardware store, uh, home improvement center, certainly online. Uh, or you can use a, a hatchet, an ax, uh, a, a tree saw, or chainsaw. Make sure that the area around your tree is clear of trip hazards when you're operating equipment like that. And you want to treat girdling a tree the same as if you're felling a tree. You want to have an escape route, maybe two, where you can go if you've got, say, an old tree and it's already weakened and it starts to fall, you're not going to get caught underneath of it. You can also uh, treat this with herbicide to help speed up the, the dying process. You can put uh, glyphosate, say, on an axe head so as you're chopping away it's already going into the, the heart of the tree. Or you can use a pump sprayer uh, and do it like that. I would also mention it's not common but with some trees, especially with other trees nearby, uh, it has happened before that uh, the poisons have gone into the root system and that tree has uh, its roots grafted to another tree and by poisoning this tree you're inadvertently poisoning another tree. It's rare but it has happened. Now of course uh, a healthy tree is going to last longer than one, than, than one that was diseased to begin with but uh, it, you know it usually takes about a year or more to consider the tree you know DOA. Holding the camera, I was by myself with my good hand and uh, chopping away with my weak hand at the bark. It took me about five minutes, so it didn't take long. Now, as you can tell, let me move over here so I'm not in shadow. There we go. You notice I've got cuts here where I sectioned off the bark, so it came off uh, in chunks. It's a little easier for me to remove. However, my point being, I've cut farther in than I've taken out. Now, I've taken enough that I've cut off the pathway, but I've cut even deeper with my horizontal cuts and my vertical cuts. And as I was uh, discussing before, you can still treat this with glyphosate or some sort of uh, uh, chemical to, to kill the tree uh, quicker if you want to. 
just by going in these grooves. Something I wanted to add, and this is a just common sense and, and it's a safety uh, matter. Whether you've got uh, more trees than you can count on your property or just a handful, um, I use just pink marking tape. And I'm going to be a tree hugger for just a moment here. But I mark these trees that I've girdled. And I'll just take this, and you can get this at Lowe's or Home Depot, local hardware stores. They're not just in pink. You can pick your favorite color. But I'm marking this. You might not be the only one on your property, whether it's the UPS man, kids in the neighborhood, somebody's trespassing, hunters. Uh, you know, you forget. This reminds folks, hey, stay away from this tree. Uh, it's not fully cut down and you don't know. So it's better to mark it and know what was done to this tree and know where it's at uh, than to regret something later. Now, I don't claim to be an expert about all things. Most of my uh, knowledge comes from my experience and from my mistakes and that uh, you get to benefit from that. But uh, if you liked what you were watching or you didn't like what you were watching, feel free to post comments below. I always appreciate it. And if you hit our subscribe button, you'll be sure and, and get notifications whenever we have a new video coming out. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, folks, and God bless.